Hi guys, good afternoon. Um, this is me. Um, all the slides today, um, can we start the timer too, just so I can keep track of, can we start the timer just so I keep track of not going over? Cool. Um, all the slides are here, so if you want to take a picture of the slide um, on the bottom right, um, you can get all the slides later. So I know everyone's been taking pictures of slides they like. Well, I did you a solid. They're all online. Um, just don't get ahead. Um, <laughs> So uh, I teach computer science at Washington Leadership Academy um, in DC. And uh, whoa, I, I saw someone want to take a picture. So I need to do that. All right, we good? All right, perfect. This is just like school. <laughs> um, and so these are my students, and then they'll come up um, later, introduce themselves, and talk about their work. Um, so I have uh, Dak Mui. I'm going to wave to the people. Uh, Junior. Uh, Kalila is next. Then Jameer. Uh, and Jerome. Uh, so the, the school I teach at is called uh, a Washington Leadership Academy. It's a public charter school um, in Northeast DC. Uh, we're a Title I school um, servicing our, their uh, ninth grade class came from 32 different middle schools in the city. Um, we applied for this uh, grant um, through the XQ Institute um, and we're one of 10 schools in the nation that got a $10 million grant um, over five years to redesign and rethink what public high school means in this country. Um, part of that is, is giving every kid in our building a four-year computer science education. Um, every kid takes it. Uh, girls take it, boys take it, athletes take it, non-athletes take it. Um, and it, it, it increases a lot of the diversity and the people we see um, in this space. Um, another piece of that is, is exposing our students to emerging technologies. Um, and that's where this whole virtual reality stuff comes in. Um, and just making sure that they're on the frontier as opposed to playing catch up as we see a lot in public schools. So uh, we are focusing today on, on a, a subsection of VR called WebVR. I don't n necessarily know where everyone's coming into um, this room with what knowledge they are, but um, I'll give you a little brief overview. Uh, we'll skip this video um, just for the sake of time, but if you just YouTube what is WebVR, it's like the second or third video. Um, and it's, it's, it's virtual reality that can be rendered in a web browser. Um, you don't have to install software uh, like you might with uh, Unity and like WebGL and some things like that. Um, it, it's, and you'll see more in a little bit later, um, that's why we use it, um, is all of our students have Chromebooks, $200 laptops, that dominates the education market. So when we teach our students programming with virtual reality, we want to be able to say to another school that you can do this too. And if all our kids program on MacBooks, I can't say that. So it, it's, a, it's about scalability and just like democratizing like computer science education for all kids. So why teach computer science in the first place, and then why teach virtual reality um, in addition to CS? Um, so 1.3 million jobs, the number of computing jobs um, open in 2020. That's the projection. Um, we currently don't have uh, the number of kids going into college and majoring in CS. Um, I might be preaching to the choir here, so I'll go a little bit quickly here. Um, it's the fastest growing job sector. Um, it's also uh, the highest paying job sector um, in computing. Uh, it's the number one source for new jobs. Currently, there's over half a million um, computing jobs um, in this country. Uh, this is a piece for later, shameless plug. Uh, it's just, just an op-ed I wrote in US News about equity and like what computer science means um, to some of our most marginalized populations. Um, it's a really short read. Um, I'm not a writer, so it's, uh, you can check that out uh, later. Um, here's an interesting fact just about DC. Um, in 2015, there were only 30 black kids in the entire city who took AP computer science, in the entire city. Of those 30 kids, only six of them passed, and of those six, five went to private schools. So we're talking only one black kid in a public high school in the Washington, D.C. in 2015 took and passed AP computer science in a city that is mostly black. That's like a problem. This year, so it says next year, but this year, because uh, there'll be 10th graders this year, all 10th graders will take AP computer science. Um, and it, it's, it's a really important piece to us to say that like this is what um, it means when you know you, you walk the talk or yeah walk the walk. Um, I love this picture uh, when we talk about diversity problem in, in K-12 but also the, the, the sector. Um, this is Bobby Johnson. She's uh, one of our rising 10th graders and that's the first time she put on a, a VR cardboard and just the look on her face of, of just amazement. And there's a video online I could share if you just like YouTube our school. There's like the gasp that you actually see. I screenshotted it because it was just, it's, it's like a really beautiful moment. Um, um, and this, this piece is what we talk about virtual reality. 
Um, when you ask kids what their favorite subject in school, why do you wake up in the morning and you come to school, they talk to you about extracurricular activities, they talk to you about like technology. Kids love those things, and so me as a teacher, when I, when I try to figure out how I engage students the most, I have to find the, the convergence of the two, um, and that's where, I, that's where I found, you know, virtual reality and teaching it to students. Um, it's, it's a beautiful way to merge art and computing together. And it's not just about like algorithms or, you know, finding how to write a program that is even or odd or something like that that we see a lot in introductory CS courses. Um, so we use this uh, framework called A-Frame. Um, the documentation link is there, but again, the slides, it's all in the slides. Um, and, I'll, and I'll go through what A-Frame is. Um, but it goes back to the whole Chromebook situation, that little conundrum where I was like, how do I teach programming with Chromebooks? Um, and so A-Frame is a web framework uh, for building virtual reality experiences. And so some of the key features of it, it's, it's really made simple. Most intro CS courses start the programming unit with HTML. Um, and a lot of the script tags is very similar. So kids can easily see the parallels between the two. Very easy to pick up. Um, and they, they see its opening tag, closing tag, um, and things like that. Um, and you don't have to install anything. Um, all my kids have their, their, their work published on GitHub and GitHub pages. And you could go on your phone. Um, you can go on a desktop computer. And you can interact with them without having to buy expensive equipment or install software. Um, A-Frame is also cross-platform. Um, so kids have also not only put on their mobile phones, not only on the desktop, but we have a Vive and an Oculus in our school. And, and kids can then port it over using like experimental builds of uh, their browsers. So you have to download like, a, a, like Firefox Nightly is like some beta version that you can develop stuff with or test your development stuff with. Um, and so it works on all those platforms. Um, and then the, the architecture of how you actually build things lends itself really nice to when they decide to go and learn Unity. Um, it's like you're creating instances of objects and you're attaching behaviors um, and other characteristics to it. Um, and so when they start to get more advanced in their learning um, and they step out of the web VR uh, space, uh, they can there's a lot of skills that transcend um, both um, environments. So it's tool agnostic, so it's really nice. And they don't know about any of this, um, but um, it interacts with like React and Node.js and jQuery and those things. Um, but just I, I have like this, this belief about teaching computer science where we shouldn't just make things so contrived. I, most kids in like middle school learn block languages, which is great. Um, our students learn block languages for like a week, uh, maybe a week and a half. But I do believe you have to give kids tools, real life tools in their hands that adults use and let them play with it. Um, and so giving them the flexibility later on in their life to say like, hey, now I learned React, now I learned Node.js or whatever, I can still use the things I learned ninth and 10th grade. Um, and then it has a visual inspector, um, which is cool because a lot of uh, VR professionals use some type of environment like this. And I'm Mr. Miyagi in the sense that I don't let kids use this at first. Um, I want them to start coding and typing and getting brackets wrong and all those things. And Jimmy was looking at me because um, <laughs> he's dealt with this frustration. Um, but after they go through the you know wax on, wax off, and they play around with this, they're much better at navigating this. Um, so here are my beliefs about uh, computer science in, in three kind of uh, pillars. Um, I think you have to make things relevant to kids. Even in math class, math class kids say, like, when am I going to use this? Um, part of like merging art and computing makes it very relevant. Like you're making art. You're making something that you care about. Um, and that's a really easy way to check that block off. But then on, the, on, on top of that is about theory. So when you see coding boot camps, you're teaching kids a lot of just like do, do, do. And when kids don't understand the underlying why behind certain things, then you prescribe them to like a mid-level engineer. And they're not actually grappling with the theoretical things that like actually are changing a lot of the computing field and a lot of industries. And so when we talk about virtual reality, it's not just like putting an object on the screen. I want to talk to them about like, let's talk about the XYZ plane. Like, let's actually talk about rotation. Let's talk about like transformations of objects. Um, and getting them to, to actually take those skills, because technologies change, language change, I need them to walk away with uh, transcendent skills. And so that's like a second important piece, because that makes them the most competitive for college and beyond. Um, and then the last piece is practice that builds on each other. Getting kids to do stuff. And starting very small, and then just building on that. And you're going to see some examples um, with um, my students. So here's some student work. Back to me. It's all yours. Hi, my name is Jack Louise Aleke, and 
I started coding virtual reality towards the end of the, fir the fourth quarter. And the hardest part for me was getting started because like I really didn't know like how to code virtual reality. And my friend Kalila, she's right there. She helped me get started and she taught me the basics. And after my first project, I coded that. That was my second project. And like I wanted to showcase um, an abstract type of project. And like I incorporated some of my favorite colors and just random shapes and like brought my imagination to life. And I think um, virtual reality will be like very important in the future. All right, hello, uh, how's everyone doing? Uh, all right, so <laughs> this is my project. Uh, it's a basic uh, res uh, virtual restaurant. Uh, so it helps give the client slash customers um, a sense of how the restaurant looks and how the food they're serving is. So, you know, if I would do, if I would change something uh, or add something, it would be uh, to add objects into it because as you can see, it doesn't look as like, you know, the best. And so, yeah, that, that's the only thing I would change. Um, how VR will help in the future? I mean, um, yeah, how would it help in the future? Um, I would ask, I would tell um, virtual engineers to uh, to make their programs more uh, more interactive and uh, animated because to me and my peers, uh, interactive and animated uh, programs help me uh, kind of focus more on the topic and help me kind of keep it in my head and whenever it's brought up it comes like like that to me so yeah hi I'm Kalila Sutton and my project is kind of dimensional because you can go into different dimensions it's not very advanced as my other project that you'll see later in the slides, but um, I've added a video with my favorite song, the Star Wars theme song. Uh, <laughs> and um, behind that little sphere is the different worlds where you can interact with the trees and see everything. And um, as my knowledge progress um, in VR, I hope to make like people that walk around in the land so you can interact with them and um, actually talk and have a conversation with them. So yeah, yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Jameer. Uh, it's me. Uh, fun fact, I like bow ties. Um, so uh, this is one of my first projects. Uh, I'm a Boy Scout, and I was at the 2017 uh, Boy Scout National Jamboree. And um, I took the programming merit badge because I figured Mr. V taught me so much. The task be easy. It was pretty easy, but uh, uh, my mentor, uh, we went through and we said, what's a project that we can apply to multiple people and it'll end up looking really cool. So uh, we designed this uh, VR world uh, for Purple Rain in honor of Prince. Um, it looks really cool. And uh, this is my second project. So. Uh, I was at the 2017 Jamboree and we had a lot of speakers, some of which were, were cool, uh, others of which inspired a lot of people to say and do a lot of things that I was not personally agreeing with. Um, but all in all, it was a very fun experience, but uh, I got a little bit riled up and I know that uh, yelling at people is not the best way to calm down, even if it seems like it might be. So I designed this. It's a 3D spinning Taurus knot and it's in a very soothing color and it uh, very much calms me down and so I hope that VR can be used to uh, calm other people down and just be used as a the next step in art going from canvas to digital 3D art. So yeah. Hi I'm Jerome. I'm a rising 10th grader and I'm also CEO 
and founder of my own virtuality business called Tau VR. And basically what I did was, uh, Tau VR is basically a company that wants to teach and train the world. And what I built, what I built is a WLA school building, which is a thanks to WLA for teaching me virtuality and actually showing me how to actually make computer science and actually code and actually make, um, make HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So it's kind of like a thanks to WLA. And another project that I did is a Warzone VR scene, which is um, also a tribute to my company saying that the training aspect of it is saying that the government can train their soldiers in actually a virtual reality environment and not sending them to an actual place that may cost a lot more money. And instead, they can actually send them in an actual virtual reality um, simulation and be able to train and actually do all the same actions and motions and walk through the same tactics and protocols through actual virtuality experience. And the third game that I made was um, actually for um, Barack Obama. And this is um, a world to say that, to show students that they should be inspired and hopeful about the future and that they should, they should look forward into the future and see I can actually build a park, I can actually build actual architectural buildings. And basically in the video, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama speak about how they were inspired to build their sustainable energy um, park in the south side of Chicago where they grew up in. And actually it shows how they were motivated and inspired to actually build and change the community that they came, came from. And that was basically, that making this world made me like inspired to act and actually think about schools shouldn't prepare kids for the job of the past and actually prepare students for the careers of the future. And that made me think like schools need to change and change from what they are to be able to actually accommodate for the new jobs that are coming around and actually accommodate for the new computer science jobs that are appearing. Um, so what Jerome fails to mention is uh, started, he started his company, and he's not just a kid who just says, I'm going to start a company. Um, he actually applies officially to the city of D.C. for a business license, pays an application fee, and gets approved. Then he enters an entrepreneurship competition, the World Series of Entrepreneurship. He's the only ninth grader there, places third place, and wins $2,000. And then I asked Jerome, what are you going to do with all that money? He says, I'm going to buy t-shirts. And I was like, OK. And it's typical, typical ninth grade answer, but no, for real. Like after, You're not going to buy $2,000 worth of t-shirts. What are you going to do? So he, he goes online, and he finds a Unity course at Princeton for five days that costs $2,000. And so next week, that's what he's going to be doing. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to teach these kids. It really is. Um, so um, I want you to walk away with some, some actual tangible resources, like things you can do if you have young people in your life who want to do this. And, and we believe at our school that like, it's not just about the kids in our building, though like every day I work for those kids. Um, we want to be able to share uh, our resources to places in like rural America who may not have a computer science teacher or something, or just a kid who just doesn't have this opportunity to learn in schools. And so um, I'm, I'm going to talk about just like a little bit like the framework and then give you uh, a link to like some tutorials and walkthroughs and things like that. So um, I believe in just regardless of what subject you teach, I think you should show students an end product. Um, when I was teaching math, I would show students the types of problems they were able to solve by the end of the unit. And I would say, you can't solve this now, but in three weeks, you will be. Um, and so when, when I'm teaching computer science, I show them, this is what you can build at the end of today's lesson, or in three days, or so on and so forth. Um, and then I let students play with that product. It's like, go fork this project that I made, and I actually want you to start changing some attributes here, start changing some colors, start changing some numbers. And if you break it, who cares? Like, it doesn't matter. It's just the computer. It's, it's fine. And letting kids learn that way, as opposed to me just like talking at them, giving them a cheat sheet or a worksheet, saying like, these are A-frame characteristics. Like, kids don't learn that way. We don't learn instruments that way. You don't learn how to surf that way. Like, you just go, and you make mistakes, and you play with stuff. Um, start small giving them small wins, things that are manageable, that they can discover and, and get those wins. And then last is challenging students to learn and discover on their own. Um, one of my favorite beliefs about teaching is starting students with a very good question that they want to answer. And in the process of answering that question, another question arises. And it's this cycle of question, curiosity, question, curiosity, that students start learning their things on their own. 
And I'm gonna show you some of, I mean, highlight some of their work where I didn't teach them some of these things. They just went off and they had questions. And so when we started this, this is what they built. It was just inanimate objects. Let's talk about the different shapes and entities that exist on the screen. Go play with them, change the names, change the colors. And obviously the next question is like, okay, this is cool, but like I want them to move. So it's like, well, guess what? Like that's the next thing we're gonna do. Like how do you move things? And these natural questions arise where students are asking, okay, now what if I click, how can I make it interactive? It's like, well, now you can click things. And little chunks, small things that they can do, and you build on those things. Um, and this is Kalila's project that she didn't show you, but um, she wanted to add textures to her things, and I didn't teach her that. And I said, go Google, because that's what we do. And there's like a mantra in my class that I say like, I don't know every word in the dictionary, but I can speak English, I can write. Like, you don't have to know any, everything about a computer programming language to build. And a lot of kids, like, want to sit there and know all these, like, theoretical things before they just, like, put their idea on paper and just build something. And so encouraging students to do that, I think, is very key. Um, Jerome, I, you missed the little R2-D2 thing, but, um, and putting video in there, like, he taught that to himself. I didn't teach him that. We have, like, an arc of what, where I'm trying to take them to, and then once they have questions, it's like, Teaching kids how to read documentation. Like, this is it. Look, this is how you use it. Look it up. Try it out. Um, I think a student who's not here, his name's Lewis, uh, went on um, some guy's GitHub page and, and was like, hey, you can put you know, the keyboard controls in here and introduce physics and, and all those things. And, and these are the conversations we have in our small little elective uh, class at the end of the day. Um, there was like water and stuff. Um, I remember Jerome showed me this one day, like early morning, it was like 8 a.m. or something. Um, school starts at 8.30, and uh, I was just blown away. Like him just figuring out on his own, like I'm gonna import 3D models in here. I found these, this, what were you using? It was like Blender or something like that. And um, giving kids the opportunity to tinker and then impress you. A lot of teachers are, are scared, and I don't want you to think that like, you have to know this stuff to teach kids this stuff. Like, cause I sure am not an expert at this. But when a kid comes up to me and says like, hey, do you know how to do this? I'm like, no, but that's good you ask because we can Google it together, right? Um, and so this is the progression, starting small and, and you, you end up getting to things that look like that. Um, and so if you're interested, you could use that, follow that bit.ly link or, or my GitHub page is there. If you, you like GitHub, please contribute. Uh, this, these articles are sourced um, from people um, in this online community, but also st some students have written articles on this. Like I asked, Jerome, I said, hey, when you found out how to import these models, I want you to write a walkthrough on that so other people can learn that too. So him and this girl Shayla and Khalil, I think you wrote some too, um, have, there's a table of contents when you go there, they've written articles on that to teach other people. Um, and so that's all I have for you. We have about six minutes and 10 seconds and change. So if you have questions for, for any of them, um, please ask them questions. So the question, just for the camera in the back, what do you want to make in the future? Um, I want to start making like, like what Jerome did, but bigger on a bigger scale. Like I can make like New York City and and all these, and make states where you can like drive through and see the world without even moving anywhere or going outside of your house. So, yeah. Um, what I want to make is uh, uh, my one of my favorite subjects besides computer science, which would be is uh, uh, chemistry. And um, uh, you don't get there's not a lot you can do in chemistry that doesn't seem like it's going to be explosive or hurt you in some form. So uh, my project is uh, researching how uh, the elements interact with each other, and then eventually building a VR database of this is how this interacts with this, and then eventually just laying that out on a table, and you can like reach for uh, you can reach for hydrogen and you can reach for oxygen and you can see what happens when it interacts with phosphorus and you can do all of that but still not get hurt. Um, what I want to build in virtuality is entire world history curriculums. So say like AP world history or um, um, American history like they have in the 
in the cafeteria, did you can actually create whole environments and whole actual historical events like the Boston Tea Party and like the the t the Twenty Years' War and actually talk about and actually show students how virtuality can bring things alive when a teacher spends most of their time trying to sell students on a topic or idea and they might not even be interested. But if a teacher actually utilizes virtuality and actually says, okay, everyone put on these virtuality headsets and follow me around in Athens and actually let's take a tour of the actual sculptures that are in the hall. And if I was, a st like, me being a student, I would be really engaged and, like, really excited to actually walk through As Athens and actually be able to see the sculptures that people made. And that would be a lot better than looking at a flat picture of a photographer who went to Athens, and I would just sit back and say, I want to go to Athens one day. I want to visit there. In virtuality, you, can actu you actually can. So I think that's one of the next projects I want to do. So uh, as crazy as this might sound, uh, I would like to in um, put school safety in virtual reality because I did a whole uh, PSA on it, and I think that's that's that should be a number one priority as well because like I don't want like on the news like I like hate to see schools like getting shot up and. You know, all of these events happening at different schools, and I'm over here, like, what can I do? I'm always thinking every day, like, what can I do? Virtual reality, like, putting something that I really enjoy and making that a reality, but virtually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what I'd like to do is, like, make your imagination, like, just go wild. Because with virtual reality, you have the world in your fingertips. You can just make out whatever you're thinking, whatever you want to, like, whatever you're thinking, you can just make it yourself and make a world where you can do whatever you want with anything. Any other questions? All right, so reactions from friends and family outside of school. Well, they think, like, my family and friends and stuff, they think, like, it's such a complicated thing. That's like, oh, it's like magic, or it's such a hard thing to learn. But once you learn it, it's really simple. And thanks to my teacher, I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Okay, so uh, about reactions. Uh, so <laughs> my parents, uh, they really don't understand coding. And so whenever I bring up, like, uh, virtual reality in there, they're like, well, what language are you speaking? I mean, they, they don't understand, and that's probably something I need to work on as well, and, like, explaining things. But from friends, uh, I always have, like, for example, my friend Jerome, he always uh, contacts me whenever, or I contact him whenever I need help on any type of VR. He gives me suggestions, and I take them. I really enjoy his feedback, and you know, he's always there. Um, reactions from my family. My dad um, used to work, f used to um, code for the government, so he understands everything, even though I surpassed his knowledge on coding. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, whenever I show my dad the code that I was working on, he's like, wow, you could do this, you could do that. So I always get some type of feedback from my father. My mother, on the other hand, is on a whole different world because she has no idea what I'm talking about. All right, Jameer and Jerome, real quick, because we're 10 seconds out of time. Uh, I have a little sister, and uh, she tries to move around, and she like trips on the table. It's funny sometimes. Other times, it's like, what did you just do? <laughs> um, so most of my friends are like, just like amazed and just like, did you actually code that? And it's like, that looks like something like someone who's like 30 years old and like has all their hair pulled out. And it's <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. same bags. That's what I got here. Yeah, I'm like good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's our talk. Please feel free to, to reach out to them and talk to them. Um, my information, I, I got requests for the slides. I'll make it public. Sorry. I just, oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. I'll get on there. But thank you. Thank you.